Imagine this scenario. You wake up every day, groggy, crawl out of bed, sit down to work with your cup of coffee, attend your morning calls, get on with your work for the day, attend more calls, join a meeting while you're having lunch, piss your partner or your roommate off in the process, get some more coffee or tea, snack at the table while watching Netflix in the gap, attend more calls and more calls and more calls and you guessed it, more calls. And before you know it, it's 11 p.m. and it's time for you to go to bed so that you can wake up the next morning and do it all over again. Imagine having to go through this day after day. I'm guessing for some of you, you don't even have to imagine it because there are days that play out exactly like this. If you're caught in a similar rut and you think it's getting detrimental to your life, which let's face it, is probably what's happening, just know that you need to do something about it. Irrelevant of whether you're driven by your job or even if you don't like it at all, all play and no work can make Jack or Siddharth or Mahesh or even Ramesh a dull boy. In a world where we idolize hustle culture and the workers worship mentality, it takes some serious conviction and dare I even say some true common sense to not let your work drive your life, but instead let your life drive your work. I'll give you a second to let that sink in. As we grow up, we're told that we need to only focus on one thing, aka your work or your specialization, and that your interests and hobbies can and should take a back seat. Well, none of us only have one fixed personality trait. We're no robots. Yeah, at least I'm not one. So why is it that we make our entire lives about only one single thing? Why is it that when someone asks you what you do in life, your automatic reaction is to tell them the work you do? Because subconsciously you feel that that is what defines you. Instead, what we need to be doing is tapping into these other areas or traits of ours. Because our multifaceted natures are what get us to truly think outside the box. There are so many huge benefits of simultaneously pursuing multiple things or spending time on your interests or hobbies. I let this TEDx speaker, who's also the captain of the Karnataka football team and a former Tottenham Spurs player, tell you this better. I think in general, I would recommend for anybody just as a lifestyle choice to be as multifaceted as possible uh, and to have multiple things happening. Uh, not to the point that you've overloaded your plate and you're not able to give 100% to anything, but just be sensible and start exploring other things as well if you have the time and the capacity for it. Um, for me personally, even as a footballer, um, I have found that when I have other projects that I'm also working on simultaneously, um, it actually helps me perform better. Why? Because I think if you end up, you know, just completely mentally absorbed by the game, completely physically absorbed by the game, if there is a little slip up, if you make a small mistake, it seems huge. You know, because you've put so every vested. bit of energy yeah. into this yeah. that you don't actually have um, anything to come away from it and sort of, you know, just balance yourself out a bit. But if you had, you know, like a lot of these footballers have families to come back to. They have, they pick up instruments and stuff as well, you know, so there's mm. other things that you end up doing. And I would 100% suggest that to anybody, just as a lifestyle choice, not just as an athlete. Right. Uh, but for me personally, when I have had other things to do, I perform better on the field as well. So what can you do about this? Start with identifying areas or activities that you're naturally drawn to and spend time doing just that. This could be a hobby, a long lost interest, a side gig, a sport, or pretty much anything that fuels you. Your plan should be to dedicate a portion of your day to doing just this and treat them as non-negotiables. But be realistic about the time you allot to these and ensure that it doesn't hamper your other daily activities. For instance, when I was a kid, I loved writing. I remember back in school how I had a flair for writing and I even had a lot of teachers compliment me on my writing skills. But over time, I completely lost touch with creative writing and expression. And the only writing I ended up doing was basically email, which was exactly the opposite of what I wanted to do. And I think it's something that we all collectively despise. But now, I rediscovered the art of writing and my love for writing through scripting these YouTube videos and the newsletters I send out to my community. 
So yeah, if you're interested in reading short write-ups about topics and tactics that will help you level up in your life, then yeah, consider subscribing to my newsletter. It's on my website. I'll leave a link to it in the description. A lot of people default to thinking, how is this activity going to help me? Monetarily. But that's how pervasive societal thinking is. Not everything you do needs to help you make money. Some things are done because you like doing them and no one can take that away from you. But on the topic of making money, when you do make time for these activities that are important to you, you'll realize that you have more creativity and energy to fuel your day job or your other regular activities. So maybe these activities are going to help you make money after all. So what are you actually waiting for? Why don't you just grab a pen and paper or open up your favorite note-taking app or maybe just sit down and think about all these activities that you have either lost touch with or that used to earlier bring so much happiness to you. Or maybe it's something that you've always wanted to get around to doing. Just think about those activities, jot them down and then make time for it. Non-negotiable time on a daily or weekly basis and then experience the kind of benefits that they have to offer. We all have this habit of treating our work, our calls, our meetings as non-negotiable entities and we basically put work up on a pedestal. But how about treating activities and things that are truly important to us at the same level, if not better? I now have a website. You heard that, right? How about checking it out and signing up for my newsletter? Go to akashdamodhan.com and while you're at it, connect with me on Instagram too to see some exclusive behind the scenes footage. Against the Odds is a truly one-of-a-kind video podcast series that inspires individuals to pursue the path less taken. Tune into it on your preferred podcasting platform or YouTube and take your life to the next level. Go to ato-podcast.com for all the links. So yeah, I've been trying something with my life, something I started re- very recently doing, where whenever someone asks me, so what do you do? Or, uh, you know, what do you do in life? I give them this answer like, yeah, so I'm experimenting with my life. I'm trying to do things I've never done before. Uh, You know, really trying to improve myself on a day on day basis. Just putting myself in, you know, uncomfortable situations and seeing if I can cope with it. And yeah, I'm learning a lot along the way. You know, Uh, it's quite exciting. And at that point, these guys look at me. They have this very confused expression on their face. And they're thinking that this is some jobless guy or a wavered guy. Or they followed up with a question like, that and all is great bro, but what do you actually do? So that's when it's my turn to give them that same confused expression and say, like, what do you mean? So yeah, moral of the story, don't let your job define you. You are far bigger and more important than that. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for sticking around till the very last minute of the video. This truly means the world to me and uh, yeah, I don't take this for granted. So yeah, I'll see you on the next one then. Cheers.